Welcome to section six of reproductive embryology. In this section, we'll be discussing twinning. Let's get started. There are two different types of twins that can arise during pregnancy. The first type are dizygotic or fraternal twins. And these twins arise from two separate eggs, each of them fertilized with their own sperm. So in other words, one sperm isn't shared between two eggs. And this type of twinning is more common than monozygotic twins. And it's especially prevalent when a couple goes through IVF treatments. The second type of twinning is called monozygotic or identical twins. Monozygotic twins arise from one fertilized egg that splits early in pregnancy. And we will discuss the timeline of this splitting process a little later in this video. This image helps show the difference between dizygotic or fraternal twins and monozygotic or identical twins. The image on the left shows two different eggs being fertilized by different sperm, whereas the image on the right shows one egg being fertilized by one sperm and then it divides, leading to monozygotic twins. Now let's discuss chorionicity and amnionicity of dizygotic twins. So a chorion refers to the placenta. And the amnion is referring to the amniotic sac. So the question is whether or not the twins will share a placenta and whether or not they will share an amniotic sac. And they don't share either of them. So the key point is that the zygotes form and develop separately. So they will be dichorionic, in other words, there will be two placentas, so they're not shared, and diamniotic, so there will be two amniotic sacs. In other words, they're not sharing an amniotic sac. So this is always the case when discussing dizygotic twins. Now let's discuss monozygotic twins. In monozygotic twins, the chorionicity and the amnionicity are based on when the cleavage occurs. This diagram shows an overview of the embryo development over time. This is discussed in section one of reproductive embryology. And you'll notice that we've actually added to this image four different stages, one, two, three, and four. And these are the four stages you need to be aware of because it's in these different periods that cleavage can result in a different outcome. And to help you remember each of these stages, there's a mnemonic acronym called SCAB, S-C-A-B. The S indicates that everything is separate. The C indicates that the chorion is formed already and so it's shared. The A stands for amnion, which is formed and shared during this period and B indicates that the body will be shared. Just a reference to conjoined twins. Now let's focus just a little bit more on this first stage. If division occurs while the embryo is in the two cell stage, or blastomere stage, all the way to the morula stage, they will be totally separate. In other words, the division occurred early enough that the amnion and the chorion can still develop individually, so each twin can have their own placenta and own amniotic sac. So they will be dichorionic and diamniotic which is depicted by this image up here. Zooming up on this, we can clearly see two distinct placentas, and we can also see in this blue line, two amnions. So they will be dichorionic and diamniotic. Now let's go back and look at the C stage, where the chorion is formed and will therefore be shared. And this will be the result if division occurs at the blastocyst stage, which occurs between days five and eight. Because at this stage, you can already see an inner cell mass those blue cells there. And you can also see the trophoblast, that outer cell mass. And the trophoblast is what will become the chorion or the placenta. And the inner cell mass will become the developing embryo. So when splitting occurs at this blastocyst stage, we are referring to the inner cell mass, not the trophoblast, which means both embryos will need to share that same chorion. So here we can see one placenta, which makes them monochorionic, but you can still see two different amnions. So they will be diamniotic. Now let's look at the third period in which cleavage may occur. And remembering the acronym is S-C-A-B. The A is referring to the amnion being formed and therefore shared. It's during this stage that the bilaminar disc will form, which you can see right here. When the bilaminar disc forms, the amnion will form. In fact, you can see this amniotic cavity right here. So if the embryo splits here, each embryo will need to share that same amniotic cavity. So they will be monoamniotic, in addition to being monochorionic because the trophoblast and the chorion, the placenta, have already formed. So these twins will also need to share that placenta. Zooming up on that image, we can see one placenta and there's one amnion. So this type of twinning is considered monochorionic and monoamniotic. And this occurs at days eight to 12. And finishing up that acronym, we have B, which indicates that the body is shared, referring to conjoined twins. Now this conjoining occurs at day 13 and above. And during this time period, the embryo undergoes gastrulation. So you get this trilaminar disc, which you can see in this box right here. 
as implied by these three layers, endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. So if division occurs here during the formation of the primitive streak, or just before this trilaminar disc forms, then the twins will not only share the chorion and the amnion, which have already been formed as we just discussed, but they will share part of their body. And again, that describes conjoined twins. There are competing theories explaining what actually happens that leads to conjoined twins, but the prevailing theory is that only part of the primitive streak splits into two embryos. The part of the streak that doesn't split becomes a body part that must be shared by the twins. So that's what makes them conjoined. Zooming up, we can see one placenta and one amnion, and we can see this conjoining right here. So, in addition to being monochorionic and monoamniotic, these twins are conjoined. Now this slide lists the details as we just explained with the previous diagram, but just remember the mnemonic SCAP. S stands for separate. If division occurs during the two cell stage to the morula stage, which is less than five days, then everything will be separate. Separate chorions and separate amnions. And C indicates that the chorion is shared. And this occurs because there's division of the blastocyst stage, which is generally accepted as days five to eight. And the trophoblast is formed by this stage, so the twins will be monochorionic but the amnion is not formed, so they will be diamniotic. Now it's very important to know that this is the most common type of monozygotic twinning, and it occurs 75% of the time. So in addition to C standing for chorion being shared, I like to think of C is for common, and the A in the mnemonic will help you remember that the amnion is shared. And this occurs because there's division of the bilaminar disc, which again is between days eight to 12. So they're gonna share the amnion, so they will be monoamniotic, and monochorionic. And the B indicates that the body is shared, so they're conjoined. And that's because there's division of the trilaminar disc, which again is really during the third week, days 13 plus. So they will be monochorionic, monoamniotic, and conjoined. Now let's do a quick question to apply this. A developing embryo splits on day 10 of gestation. What structure or structures will most likely be shared by the developing twins? Well, remember the mnemonic SCAP. S stands for separate, and in this, splitting occurs before day five. And the C will help you remember that the chorion is shared. And this is the result if the embryo divides between days five to eight. And the A stands for amnion is shared. And this is the result if the division occurs between days eight to 12. And B indicates that the body is shared. And this is the result if division occurs during days 13 and up. So we're talking the developing embryos split on day 10 of gestation. So which kind of result are we thinking of? We're thinking of this one. So this indicates that they will share an amnion. So they will be monoamniotic. And of course, they will share the chorion as well because that already developed in the previous stage. So they will be monochorionic. So what structure or structures will be shared? The amnion and the chorion. And that concludes this section.